to kind of get into uh, some of the things that you're working on. To, and uh, one cause that uh, you have uh, taken up is, uh, is the uh, issue with the pit bulls and uh, not allowing uh, uh, the adoption and the sale of pit bulls in the uh, state of Maryland, which just seems bizarre to me. Well, what happened was the court, uh, Maryland highest court, heard a case, a um, horrendous case, where a young uh, boy uh, was attacked, uh, you know, Mr. Solensky, and um, when the pit bull mauled it, did a horrible uh, mauling. Mm -hmm. So the case gets up to the court. Well, the court decides in Maryland all dogs could be declared to be da inherently dangerous if they had performed an act, if they had got off their property and they had bit somebody or they had done something. Mm -hmm. The court decided this one breed will be declared to be inherently dangerous and it will be pit bulls. Now there's no definition of what a pit bull is because a pit bull is a dog you used to throw in a pit and they'd fight. Mm -hmm. Usually it's a Staffordshire Terrier or some um, brand or uh, a breed that's similar to that. Um, the court said it's a pit bull or a pit bull mix. And now the bad thing that what's really causing a lot of problems is not only the owner is going to be strictly liable, mm -hmm. but the landlord, anybody, the groomer, mm -hmm. the dog trainer, mm -hmm. anybody who has custody of the dog now will be strictly liable if it bites the body. Unfortunately, a landlord has people living with them. They've been there 20 years. Dog's never done anything wrong. Now, if the, the landlord says, you have to move out, take the dog. Mm -hmm. The person says, I can't, you know, I'm not going to move out. The landlord has to go through the process of getting him evicted. All that time, if that dog bites somebody, which might be six to eight weeks before they can even get him evicted, landlord's on the hook with strict liability. Nowhere in the country have we placed others responsible for the owner's dog. You have strict liability for all breeds. Mm -hmm. In the 70s, it was German Shepherds. In mm -hmm. the 80s, it was Doberman Pinschers. Uh, it was Rottweilers in the 90s after the movie The Omen came out. And uh, actually another movie came out early um, in this century and pit bulls became the dog. The reason that they're considered to be, and it's um, a lot of fallacies out there, their jaws are not stronger than other animals. Actually in the test that shows that both a uh, German Shepherd and a Rottweiler have a stronger bite than the pit bull. And when they have the ones most likely to bite, there's a list, a scientific journal um, on the study of behave, animal behavior just came out in December of last year and it showed there were five other breeds more likely to bite. In Canada, the dog most likely to attack is a husky because mm -hmm. they're more popular. So because the pit bulls are popular, people say, oh, they're more dangerous. It's not true from the statistics they provide to us. And so the question is, are we going to let the court's decision, which reset Maryland's public policy, stand or does the legislature go in and fix that? And it looks like they're going to fix it. I'm on the uh, task force that's uh, looking at that. I'm the only Republican from the House on that. We met once. And we're going to meet again next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It just it seems it uh, it seems very arbitrary, and uh, and uh, and uh, certainly uh, I know it's it's got a lot of uh, pet owners and uh, pet rescue groups and humane societies and uh, and, and the like are really really upset. Well, uh, and I don't blame them for being upset. It's just it's it just seems arbitrary to me. And here's the problem. The people who have the animals are now having to say, okay, I can't stay and live where I'm at and have it. I don't have insurance. I can't get insurance. The animal is inherently dangerous, so I have strict liability. So now they've got to make a choice. Either get rid of the animal and give it to a shelter. The shelters are supposed to be no kill, a lot of them. And they're saying, wait a minute, we're inundated with pit bulls, this one specific breed. And they can't adopt them out. Right. They can't adopt them out. And so what do they do? Some of them have to... Um, go against their policy of being no-kill shelters so that they can allow room for other animals, or people um, are letting them loose uh, because they don't have the heart to go in and euthanize them, and they, they're stuck, they can't move, and so it's a real bad situation. A lot of human beings are being affected very adversely by this. It's something we have to move on, and hopefully we're going to get together and have uh, legislation that fixes this, but also protects those who are attacked. One of the things I'm looking at is what's the difference between a mauling and a bite? And there should be a strict liability once the animal goes beyond that. They're looking towards, and I think what the committee's going to come out with, is strict liability for all dogs, as 33 states have, with um, defenses. If you you were taunting the dog, it's not strict liability. If the dog was protecting its pups, it's not strict liability. If you trespassed on the property and you were doing harm to the owners and the dog bites you, not strict liability. So there'll mm -hmm. be certain protections built to keep you from having every bite.
considered to be a strict liability. And really, when it comes to uh, to, to dogs, it's it's not the breed; it's the uh, it's the training. It's uh, it's how they've been raised. You're 100 percent right. It's more often the human is the problem, mm -hmm. not the dog. Mm -hmm.